The building turned 100 this year. It was um, designed by Carrera and Hastings. Um, they're pretty well known. They, they designed a lot of uh, buildings in the late 1800s, early 1900s. And they, um, they designed the New York Public Library on Fifth Avenue, which has very similar windows to what we have around here. Um, they, they're known for their sort of like early Christian and, and, and uh, Beaux-Arts kind of uh, fusion in a way. Um, and so this building was originally uh, First Church of Christ Scientists. So it was a Christian science church. And in the late 90s, uh, Penn bought the building. It became a student performance space and then eventually a community arts and culture venue, which is what it is now. So we're in the sanctuary space. That's what we call it. That's what it's always, it, it, it used to be when it was a church. Um, and it is um, significant in many ways. Um, it's got a gigantic... Uh, dome. It's um, it's really sort of reminiscent of the Pantheon, it's sort of early Christian architecture, and when it was built, a lot of people weren't sure how Philadelphia was going to take it, because at the time they were sort of going into this classic revival period, um, and this, this sort of came out of um, almost nowhere, and they weren't necessarily expecting it. All the time. I have I have a lot of my own photos that I've taken in here, in, in this space, in the back space, um, in, in little tucked away rooms upstairs uh, in the back space. You know, um, it's it's really, it's actually really thrilling. I mean, I, I love the architecture. I feel like, I feel like this room in particular looks different at every moment of every single day. So I never get bored in here. I always discover something new. Um, you know, and I sort of invent my own kind of stories in this room, like if I were to film something, what would it look like in here, and that kind of thing. But I mean, programmatically, it's thrilling as well. I mean, I, I get to meet hundreds of people, thousands of people in a year, you know, and I get to work with artists, and, and you know, thanks to Penn and some other sponsors that we have, and at times we get to actually pay people to perform. Uh, while not charging the public to get in. So it's, it's really rewarding. Outside sweeping or taking out trash or something that's not very glamorous at all, and somebody will come up to me and they'll say that, um, you know, they, they remember this building and they remember everything else that used to be on the block and how this is one of the few things that remains. You know, so much has changed around here. A lot of these buildings are old, but maybe they've gotten a facelift or something. This really hasn't. Um, so once in a while, someone who used to come to church here will come up to me outside or at an event and tell me, you know, some sort of story. Um, there's a man who wanders around the neighborhood sometimes, and I can't remember his name, but he told me that St. Michael appeared to him in this church, which freaks me out, but is also kind of comforting at the same time, um, I guess. And, um, and then, you know, sometimes people will come in and say that they remember what the pipe organ used to sound like when they came to church here, and that's something I've never heard. So for me, that's really special. So this coming weekend, we're going to have uh, La Dada Vagaga Dance uh, 2011, which is part of the Philadelphia International Festival of the Arts. And it's a site-specific wandering show where you get to see various aspects of the sanctuary space, and you get to experience them through movement and video. Well, Anne-Marie Mulgrew is really um, adept at creating something for a space. She, she is very much in touch with the space that she's in. Um, which is why her pieces really vary depending on where she's creating and what she, you know, what she's thinking of. Uh, part of the inspiration didn't necessarily come from the architecture. It came from the Philadelphia International Festival of the Arts because they're celebrating Paris in the early 1900s. So Anne-Marie looked at um, Duchamp and some of the, the Dadaists and people like that and tried to think outside the box and tried to kind of be whimsical like she usually is. Um, while also taking some, some traditional French music from that period. You'll hear a lot of accordions, for example, um, or church bells. And um, so she took all of that and she wanted to uh, create something within a special space, do something unique. So basically she, she 
had all those ideas in mind and then just spent a lot of time in this space, you know, and just, just tried to take in all of the architecture and the way that her body moves within this space, the way that her voice sounds or her dancer's feet sound on the floor. Um, you know, she would stomp on things, she would clap her hands, she would do that, and she would really create within um, the space. A lot of artists will figure out, okay, I need 12 by 24, I need to be on the stage, I need this lighting, and they can't operate outside of that. And so, luckily she can.